chapter 17. I have the two fly catchers, red breasted fly catcher, and uh, what used to be called red throated fly catcher, or more commonly now tiger fly catcher. A subject I'm uh, very passionate about. I've been fortunate to find both in the United Kingdom, and uh, this is uh, one of the birds that myself and a team are involved in in Shetland nature. Uh, super photographed by Mike Whedon, who was there and uh, contributed to the bird's uh, identification and so on. Uh, so let's dive in. Uh, here's a typical red-breasted flycatcher, a young bird in the autumn, a uh, relatively easy one with features like the extensive yellowy buff underparts and a bit of a half of the bill base being somewhat pale and the nice kind of um, uh, buffy tips to the greater coverts and there's that lovely rump which is really not black at all there's a bit of sootiness there but an awful lot of brown on those upper tail coverts here's another young red-breasted flycatcher again uh, with a buffy wing bar this one a little bit paler looking in the light uh, not so buffy and uh, if you go to the upper tail coverts you can see they still uh, aren't very blackish not contrastingly blackish with the tail um, but that's yeah, a slightly different looking red-breasted flycatcher. And here's our bird on Fetler in 2009 in late September uh, when there was very little else around at all in Shetland uh, in migrant wise. And um, so it shows these things can turn up and notice how grey it looks underneath, uh, which was the initial impression. And on this kind of uh, easy type where the um, the tips of the greater coverts are actually whitish and you can just about see that the upper tail coverts are jet black and darker than the tail. Now here's a better photo of the same bird and there you can see the, uh, the typical bird's whiter fringes here and a white blob tip uh, and you can just about see in Rob Frey's shot the very black upper tail coverts. Now, now then here's an interesting bird uh, this bird was photographed on Alderney, which is a little tiny mistake in the book. I, I, saw, I put Guernsey, another one of the Channel Islands in the English Channel. This was on Alderley, Alderney in October, and you can see how greyish this little young flycatcher uh, is. Uh, and it was um, it was in the British Museum, the British Museum, thanks to the Natural History Museum. Um, and uh, here it is turned over and there you can see the upper tail coverts are blacker than the tail. Now it also has quite a warm toned and thorn little thorn shape on the fringes of the tertials here. A bit more like the typical um, red breasted flycatcher. There's a labelling uh, 1927 October the 29th Alderney Channel Isles and it's listed as uh, Parva Parva so they thought it was a red-breasted flycatcher. Here's the, that bird, uh, and alongside two typical young red-breasted flycatchers. These bits look the same, but that's clearly blacker. Uh, here's the same bird with, uh, here it is, with two typical tiger flycatchers. Um, you can see it's a little bit different from their whiter, more blob-tip pattern on the tertials. So what was it? Well, here's another interesting bird in the British Museum from uh, Shanghai. Uh, and this, I think, is a tiger flycatcher, but just a very buffy one to show you how buffy they can look. Here's that same bird turned over, slightly blobby tipped here, a little bit paler and somewhat blackish, though hard to tell looking at the tail coverts. Now, full credit to Brett Richards. Here's an example a live example are in the uh, greater western Palearctic area. This, I think, is in Oman. Um, but Brett Richards found this bird and persisted with it. For me, it's a tiger flycatcher. However, it's one that looks a little bit different. You can see it's got buff washed all the way through. There's that tiger fly kind of uh, pattern in the throat that looks a bit like a red flank blue tail. And uh, there he is again. You can see it is greyish, but there's a lot of buff washed through the breast there. There he is on the flip side. Uh, much more buffy pattern to the greater coverts, tertial fringes, but 
jet black other tail coverts and there's the same bird again and brett recorded the call and it's a classic tiger flycatcher call this is just part of it seems tiger flycatcher variation and uh thanks to magnus hellstrom who's highlighted this these are all tiger flycatchers would you identify this one as a tiger flycatcher in northwest europe in the autumn so or this one even so it gives you some idea of the variation and the key features to look for. Check out the book. Now here's an adult male red-breasted flycatcher. Uh, I think I've seen two or three of these in the autumn now in Britain. And here's an adult male tiger flycatcher, which contrary to some literature, they can show uh, reddish throat in the autumn, thanks to Brian Small for this shot. Look how gray it is across the breast. Here's another adult male tiger flycatcher with a red throat in September. Look how fresh they look uh, as they just molted as they head out on migration. And here's a young, uh, sorry, here's an adult female tiger flycatcher in the autumn. And then a young tiger flycatcher, this one showing more of a, a richly coloured buffy tips of the greater coverts rather than the more talked about um, wider tips. And there's a close-up of one of the clinching features here live on the Shetland bird that we were involved in. Again, photo by Mark Reader. And so I'm going to say goodbye with one of my favourite birds of all time, Mr. Tiger Flycatcher. But be aware, it looks like they've occurred a long time ago in the past and there must be some that are being overlooked.